All right, we've got a couple trips lined up. We're going to the tail in a couple weeks. And then a month after that, we're going to go to Hatfield McCoy's and try out those trails on our Raptor 700s. And then when we get back from that, we better have the skis on the trailer. So we got a lot to do. But first, since we got our trip lined up for the tail, I need a back tire. So we're going to be swapping the tire on our Supermoto today. Then I always think it's kind of cool to show the wear on the tire. This is kind of where we like to call it. Say we need a new one. You can see we're down to the wear bars here. And uh, it's really consistent wear. So we're going to basically just replace this tire. We go with the 140 70 17 on the CRF 450L because on this bike there's a lot of chain slap and it's already jerky enough. So the 140 kind of eliminates that chain slap that we're getting. And uh, it's not near as common as the 150, but for this bike, it works really well. On the XR650, we run the 150 60 17, and that works really well on that bike because there's no chain slap. But dad's tire's good. My bike needs a new tire. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, because it's different than my jack at home. But dad's got the cool Harbor Freight ATV jack, and we use it on the quads all the time, but it works good on the bikes too. So you can move your bike around instead of having it on a stationary jack. On the 450, the rear axle nut is a 32 millimeter socket. That's a, There's a little bit of grit on this side. That's a beefy axle. It's hollow. Oh. Uh, all right, so we got the tire off, but one trick that we learned with the Supermoto wheels is when you're trying to slide the caliper out of its slot right here to get the tire fully out is to loosen up the hose from its holder right here, but you loosen up the holder, that way it gives more slack on the line, so it makes it easier to pull out. And it was just two Phillips bolts, but it makes it a lot easier for putting in the Supermoto wheel and taking it out. And another quick tip is get your new tire that you're gonna be putting on warm. So we got a little heater blowing hot air to warm up the tire, or you could also put it out in the sun if, uh, it wasn't getting dark, but that way the tire is more pliable when you go to put it up back on the rim. All right, now we're going to get the air out of the tire and loosen up the nut on the valve stem so we can go downstairs and pop the bead on this tire. All right, now we can go downstairs and use our press. All right, here's our Harbor Freight press. We made this little bracket. Makes it easier to pop the bead on tires with the little lip in the front. We get it as close to the rim without hitting the rim. And it works pretty good. All right. That one didn't think it was done yet. Yeah. <laughs> That one said one more tail trip. Yeah. <laughs> Got our five gallon bucket. And we use our Motion Pro spoons and rim guards. Yeah, when possible, the rim guards are nice. But when they do that, they, they don't. They don't tend to stay on very well, so doing it yourself, you are going to inevitably scratch your rim every once in a while. And always check your tubes for any pinches or, or rips at the valve stem. Oh, I did not get that on camera, <laughs> dang You just pushed it off. Let me get some baby powder for the tube. So we put that in the tire. So 
So it makes it a little bit easier for the tube to slide around and relax. And then we use, so we use this Yama Lube tire mounting lube uh, to mount the tires. And it also makes it easier to, to get them on the bead. Also, soapy water works just as good. And you want to make sure you got the right direction. Is yeah. Is on But we still got to get the tube in there so you can see the tires only halfway on there. So we'll put the tube in first before we get it fully on there and it makes it a little bit easier. If you got one of these valve stem tools, kind of fish it through. So easier to, to not lose the valve stem in the tire. Okay, so you can see I got the snake through. So then I'll go ahead and screw this into the valve stem on the tube. <laughs> Dude! You could have saved that. We could have filled the tire with that. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> Dude, that was more than... That was like a check your fans, dude. My God. All right. All right, we got the valve stem through and we put a, the nut back on just loosely. And now we're going to pop the other side of the bead on. All right, so we're starting away from the valve stem and we're just gonna kind of walk it real slow not get too much of a bite. All right, so now that we've got the tire halfway on, I'm gonna use my knees, knee buddies to get the tire into the valley. So when I'm working my away from me, uh, gives me the most stretch to make it so I can get the tire all the rest of the way on. Forget the red protector. Yeah. All right. Cool. Now the most important thing is you didn't change a tire unless you scratched your rim. All right, now we're on to my favorite part, which is popping the bead on the tire. So we use the Yama Lube again. Hopefully make it easier for it to pop. She's going. Boom. All right, so I let it fully deflate and then I like to at least inflate it again one more time and let it fully release so that way the tube inside is fully relaxed so it gives it a chance to to un unkink or whatever it could be doing on the inside all right, all right now that we got the tire on I'm going to be pulling off the old wheel weights I like to use an automotive trim pry tool so we don't scratch the rim and now we're ready to rebalance Yep, so we're balancing the tire, so the heaviest part of the tire is always going to sink to the bottom and the lightest part of the tire is always going to be at the top. So we just put three weights on and it wasn't enough, so we'll add a little bit more. Alright, we're trying two more and let's see how it does. Okay, so that's more than what we needed. So we'll try a one and replace this two. And that should be close enough that it's not going to want to move. So we just needed four weights and she's balanced. So I'll go ahead and pull these and remove the back adhesive on the back of these and put them in their final resting spot. Yep, so we're just getting the wheel ready to put back on and reinstalling the spacers on this bike with the aftermarket supermoto wheels the spacers are different for each side and I like to pack them 
full grease. One thing I forgot to do when I reinstalling the wheel back into the onto the bike is prying the rear pads on the caliper apart uh, to give you a little bit more clearance to easier to maneuver the disc in into between the pads when you're trying to shimmy all this together. All right, so we just torqued the axle nut to 94 foot pounds per the manual. Now I just like to put brake cleaner on the disc in case our oils from our hands got all over it. Okay. 